What's up guys, it's VST here, when I speak tech. Welcome back on my channel guys. Yes, that's Samsung Galaxy S21 and I know what I said in the past, still true, but yes, here we have the One UI 3 One. Right now that's the only chance for me to get my hands on the One UI 3 One, having the S21 lineup. So, without any further ado guys, let's find out all the new things into the One UI 3 One. And guys, do you know that 96% of the people watching this channel are not subscribed, so please help me fix that one. I think you know how to do that one if you enjoy videos like this. And without any further ado, guys, let's get going. So I'm opening the box. All right, it's a rather tiny box. That's the Phantom Grey, right? It's a nice phone. And by the way, watch out for my full review in probably one week or so. I'm still testing it. All right, switching the phone and starting with the changes on the home screen. You know that on the One UI 3, when you go to the left, you're either dealing with Samsung free, right? Or apparently with nothing. Now, in the One UI 3 One, Samsung fixed that one. Why? You can just do like this, go on the left, and then apparently you can also choose the Google Discover, right? And just let me know in the comments down below, what do you think people will choose? I can pretty much tell you, probably 90% are gonna stick to Google, right? It's really great that Samsung allowed this option, right? So again, can pinch out to zoom, go here, you can either choose Google Discover or stay with Samsung Free or just remove and have really a very uncluttered home screen. By the way, if you're a big fan of Samsung Free, it is right now available as a standalone application, right? So I think for the biggest fans out there, you can also get Samsung Free now as a standalone app. More changes on the home screen. So when you expand here the notifications and also the quick toggles, you know that you can access your devices. Right, when you open the devices here, you're gonna get smart things. We are all, all used to that one from the One UI 3 Zero. Now the change here is that when you click here, you can apparently also select home. So when I press like this right now, you see my studio light is gonna go off. When I press on, it's gonna get resumed. So this presents a very nice way for you guys to use Google Home integration directly from the devices. Else you can also go from Google and just open home and access it really from the Google application. So thumbs up for Samsung for adding this integration. Speaking about integration, it seems that Samsung worked really close with Google, so they offered also some other things with them. So if you go here into the dialog guys and you go into the three dots, you can see that you have here an option called make video calls using. When you tap on this one, you can see that right now you have a native integration with the Google Duos, right? You can apparently go and stick with your default phone app, but you can also select Duo. So every time you wanna make a video call, you're gonna be using Duo right now. So Samsung managed to integrate right now Google Duo into the stock dialer app, but it doesn't really stop here. When you are making a call using Google Duos, you're gonna get also support for auto framing, which means that if you move your face, the phone is going to kind of center it. And they also added video call effects. So let me just show you those one. You can go here from settings, go to the advanced features, and then you're gonna see something called video call effects, right? So you can either disable it or enable it, right? But why not clicking on it? So let's click on this one. And here we can see we have more settings. The auto frame feature I was referring to is actually keeping the focus on you while you are in a video call. They have added also some video effects. The first one is blur. This right now is the blur one and you can see my face kind of in the center of this auto framing feature and also the blur behind my face. All right, let's go and test the other one. This is the color one. You can see the phone is picking a color that kind of like matches your outfit. Now in my case, not really matching, but it does really a nice job with cutting out the face, right? So this one it really is using the picture that I shot and actually I think it's doing a great job. I mean, you can also put yourself on the beach or in the forest. So I think nice job from Samsung. Now, as we covered the home screen changes and the dialer changes, let's go to some privacy changes. So Samsung has introduced a new feature that allows you to remove the GPS location data from your photos when you share them. And even more, they introduced a new sharing function called private share. Let me demonstrate, guys. I'm right now into the gallery, so let's say I wanna share this picture. Again, a very nice picture shot by myself. You can now click here on the share button and you can see here we have something called remove location data. Once I share the picture with the remove location data tag on, the receiver will actually never get the location info into the aggressive information from the picture, which is, I think, kind of great. Samsung also launched a new private share app. To access that one, you're gonna need to go to the settings and then need to go to your biometrics and security and then just scroll a bit and you see something called private share. Once you scroll down a bit, you're gonna see something called private share. When you open private share, you need to do a very minimal setup, right? And then let's say you wanna share something, the way it works, I have selected one of my images. Now apparently you need to choose one of your contacts, so let's say this one here, 
and then you have to press the send. You have the option to send it as a text message to show a QR code and also send this with an application which pretty much means that you can send it through Viber, to Telegram, to Facebook, right? Once the receiver receives your link, they also need to install the private share. It, by the way, runs on everything later than Android 9, right? And also, you guys can control and revoke the access, so your partner can wait two days, and if they don't want to open it, the link is going to expire, all right? So that's why it's called private share. Another new functionality that Samsung bragged about is, is the song called Continuity. So when you go to the settings, apparently from here, and you scroll down to the advanced features, you're gonna see something called continue apps on other devices. So apparently switch on and off, but when you click, you will receive some more information. Guys, this is not really something new. We've seen this already in the iOS ecosystem. It is a very nice idea that allows you to use applications on your phone and then go on another device like a tablet and just resume your work. But just please note that right now, Samsung Internet and Samsung Notes are the only two supported applications. And also, you need to be signing with your Samsung account on all the devices and enable Bluetooth. So I would rather say they are starting small. Let's see how big they can grow that one. There are also some changes into the display, guys. When you go here into the settings and you go through the display, you scroll down a bit and you can just see something called Eye Comfort Shield. And actually, this is using the blue light filter that was actually found on the One UI 3 Zero. Right now, it's upgraded, updated. When we go inside, we can just see that we have the new adaptive mode, all right? So the previous blue light filter only had the option to be customized. You can of course set a schedule like from sunset to sunrise and then also adjust the color temperature. Right now, they've also added this new adaptive mode, automatically adjust your screen's colors based on the time of the day. You see minor adjustments during the day and significantly warmer colors at night. I am testing that one. Let's see how this behaves. Samsung were also bragging about the new AI capabilities of the Exynos 2100 chip. One of these is this object eraser. So right now, when you go into the gallery and you hit edit for a picture, you can go to the three dots here and you'll find something called labs. Inside labs, you can apparently enable or disable this object eraser, right? Let me just demonstrate, guys. You're gonna get something like this. Click here and then tap objects to remove them. So let's say I want to remove this plane. Click here, boom, erase. Yep, it's gone, right? Of course, then I can save it. Right, and I can also go and revert it back. This was also available in One UI 3 Zero. Let's try this also with this picture. Edit here, we're gonna go, object eraser. Let's say we don't like this tree. Click on the tree, all right, erase. Ah, okay, you know, mixed result. By the way, I did a video about an Android object eraser that I think pretty much works the same, if not better. You can check it up here. I'm heading right now to the camera department where I can find other new features from the One UI 3 One. When we go to more, we can see that we have something called here the director's view. This director's view actually enables your Galaxy S21 phone to capture videos from all the cameras and it does this in real time simultaneously. Let's test this, guys. We can see right now that I have footage from the back camera and also from the front camera. When I click here, I can apparently select also the camera. So right now I'll go to the ultra wide. That's the standard camera. This one is the telephone camera so let's go with the ultra wide one and also options on the front camera so when I click here I apparently have the picture in picture I can also go for a split mode and I can also go and just view a single right so single will just give me the back camera let's try to do this one the split one all right let's try to shoot okay hello test one two three right so it's real time okay stopping it let's see what we have shot here so we have video shot simultaneously from both cameras, all right? I'm not really sure if I'm gonna use that, but if you're into things like this vlogging, then maybe this could be your thing. Samsung added also a new version of single take. So right now, when you go to the single take, besides limiting the seconds, which you can also do on the One UI 3 Zero, you can click here and then you can see types of shot to be captured. So right now, single take can record slow motion videos, filtered videos, portraits. If you have been using single take before, then probably gonna like these new features. Also some new things here into the main camera. When you go to photo and you go to digital zoom, when you go to 30X and you look apparently something, you see this hand here. Once you see the hand like this, it means that the shot is stabilized and it apparently also can track moving people. So if you're outside and you're shooting somebody with 30X and this person is moving, then you're gonna see a tracking here. And when you see the hand here like this, you can also tap and select the person, it will track him, then you can take a better shot. And you might already seen guys that right now we have something called portrait. Finally, Samsung renamed the live focus to portrait. So we have now portrait and also 
support with video. They have added some nice options for us to manipulate the background, like the backdrop, the low key mono, the high key mono, and I think we have here also the studio lighting. So apparently once you shot a picture, you can adjust the lights. You can just see it's kind of nice. And I'm really happy that we finally see this here into the stock up. All right, we covered the main features, but the video is not yet over as there are still some minor changes. Let me just show you guys. When you go here and you search for the clock, but when you click here on the three dots, you can see something called set bedtime. Keep your sleep on track, get higher sleep by going to bed and waking up at the same time every day. You can press next and you can apparently set up your own sleep scale. I'm using the Samsung Active 2, by the way, so I do monitor my sleep and etc. But if you don't have that one, then you can apparently also use the phone to set up some sleep routines. And I think it's good that they added this option. You can set up here your sleeping time and just save this as any other regular alarm. But instead being an alarm for waking up, it's going to be an alarm for putting you into bed. So not bad, Samsung, not bad. Also some new options into the call backgrounds, which we pretty much see in the UI 3.0. When you go here, you click again three dots, you go to settings. You click on the call background, pretty much the same, but if you go to the background, we have now some new fancy animations. So you can go with that one, you can go also with this one, and there is this dancing buddy. Uh, I'm not sure why they put it, but, but it's there. Also, don't forget that when you click here, you're able to use your own videos and also use the sound from your own videos as the ringtone for the calls when you're getting a one. So, quite nice. Another small change, but I think a good one. When you go here to the settings, you apparently can access home screen settings. Previously we had to do like this and they go from here. Right now they just put it in the sound menu. Speaking about menu, when we go to the sound and vibration, we can now see that we have a notification vibration pattern. So right now you can apparently set up the vibration pattern for the notifications. The standard one, by the way, is TikTok. Don't ask me why. And we are right now guys at the end of the video. So it's time for my short recap. Although One UI 2.1 is not bringing any groundbreaking new innovations, it does add a lot of features, tiny features, but a lot. And I really hope that Samsung is gonna take some of those features and bring them back to the S20, to the s 10 because this is really what Samsung is doing best. I really hope guys that you enjoy watching videos like this. Please stay safe, please stay safe. And we're gonna catch up in one of my next videos. With that said guys, you know what follows, VST over and bye.